Welcome to Victorious Living with Pastor Charles Cowan. Now let's join Pastor Cowan and the congregation of Faith is the Victory Church. This is Victorious Living. Satan would love to give you, get, you, get us over on that side of doubt and unbelief, and which would lead us to unbelief. So it all depends on what we want to do. Really depends on what I want to do. Doesn't, doesn't depend on somebody, you know, praying a prayer for me and getting me there. Yeah, we pray for one another, absolutely. No question about that. But until I make up my mind, until I get my mind in the right place, then once I get it in the right place by thinking, because the Bible says we have the mind of Christ. We get the mind of Christ when we read, read his word. We have the mind of Christ. Let's use it. Let's keep it out there. Why? Because it is our armor. It is the forces in our warfare of how we think. Now, folks, he likes to get fear in there. If he can never get fear lodged in a person's thinking, guess what? He, he's the, that person is not going to win because fear is a blockade. It's blocking the light because fear is from the dark darkness. So what does fear do? Fear takes us over into the darkness where our mind is concerned. What does doubt do? Doubt is also of the darkness. What is unbelief? It's also in the darkness. And so on and on we could go. So when, we're, when we let our mind go there, it's not hard to tell, are we walking in the darkness? Are we walking in the light? And so he's telling us to come here and look at Jesus and put on the mind of Christ. So Peter tells us to arm ourselves. He means to take on the same mind of Christ that he used to defeat Satan. It is written, it is written, it is written, it is written. No doubt the devil was thinking, is that all you know to say? That's all Jesus had to say. It is written, amen. And so uh, Jesus' mind in the time of warfare with the adversary was a mind equipped in advance. Now that's a key statement right there. His mind was equipped in advance. Didn't wait for, he didn't wait, you know, till he got into the, uh, into the garden. He didn't wait till the time that he was praying. He didn't wait till the time that he is, his perspiration was his drops of blood. He didn't wait to that time. What are we saying there? Don't wait till trouble comes. Don't wait till Satan launches his attack. Don't wait until you're faced with a big challenge in life before you really, oh my goodness, I better get my weapons going. Well, Satan's already, you know, he's already at an advantage because he's been shooting his weapons all along. So in advance, Jesus had his mind in advance prepared for every challenge that Satan could bring to him. And he did it with what? You know, you know, if you, be the, if you be the son of God, cast yourself down. It is written. Now, all of those things that we read there in the scripture. So we see then it worked against Satan, Jesus. It, it worked against Satan. It worked against demons. It worked against sickness. It worked against disease because Jesus' mind was ever upon the words of his father. And so that's what he said. That's what he said. So what Peter is saying to us, that we put on that same mind. Well, think about it for just a moment. I can't have that same mind if I'm not continually rehearsing, reading his mind from the word. You know, you know if we go through two days, three days, a week, say, oh my goodness, I just haven't had time to read the Bible. See what you're doing? You are not keeping yourselves I'm not keeping myself where my mind needs to be in order for the weapons of my warfare to even work. So Isaiah penned it this way in Isaiah 26, verse three. 
Thou will keep him in perfect peace, which perfect is complete. Thou will keep him in complete peace. Well, now, think with me just for a moment. Won't harp on COVID-10 very long. What is it, COVID-19? What, COVID what? 19. 19. You know, COVID-19 has absolutely robbed right. some people by through COVID-10. Hey, I, I'm not against, if you, whatever, I'm not preaching against something. I am preaching for something. That God's weapons is greater than Satan's attack. Amen. And fear is a weapon that Satan uses us to disarm us in our thinking. And so if fear gets to growing in the mind, then what Jesus talked about being prepared in advance, it is written. It no longer is something that's coming out of my mind. It's something over here on this natural side that's going on in the world. But if I got my arm, if I got my armor going, if I got my guns ablazing, amen. I've got my six shooter ready, my, yeah, amen. And if they call you quick draw McGraw, that's what we want the devil to call us. Quick draw McGraw and shoot that word at the devil, amen. Even when he looks like he's not on the horizon, shoot one of them big weapons you got, guess what it'll do? It'll reach across the mountain and the valley and over there where Satan might be. It'll reach wherever Satan's at. It'll reach wherever demon spirits are at. It'll reach there if you got control of your mind. So Satan seeks control of your mind. I could go through a list of things tonight that, that comes to control our mind, but I don't have time to go through all of them. But I do know that fear is one of those things. Fear, amen. I'm not talking about being reckless. I'm not talking about... Uh, doing things. I, I, I'm just simply talking about what we need to be doing if we believe the word. If we arm ourselves with the word of God, wear a mask, do that. Do whatever you're comfortable with, but don't ever put a mask on your mouth. On the words that's coming out of your mouth. Don't mask the word of God. Don't mask what God says. Don't ever do it. Why? Because if we do there's something else that's going to come in there and it's going to be what the enemy is trying to do where we're concerned. And so here Isaiah says, thou will keep him. Thou will keep him. He's talking about God. God will keep him in complete peace. Now you see, God's getting involved in this, in what we're doing. He's, he's getting involved with us. Now listen to what he says. You probably... Have read how many times have I read this scripture? I'm sure you have as well, but thou will keep him. It says, God will keep me. Put your, put your, make it personal. God will keep me in complete peace whose mind, when my mind is stayed on him because I trust in God. If I trust in God, then I've got great confidence in what he said. If I trust in God, I don't question God. If I trust in God, I'm not questioning. I don't want to go to God. Now, God, I love you and I trust you, but what about this? Or what about that? No, if I have a complete trust in God, I have no questions. If, I'm, if my mind is armed and stayed on him, I have a complete peace that God will bring to me and God will keep me then in that complete peace as long as I keep my mind stayed on him. See, what is it, folks? It's not just God doing everything. It's God working with me to do and bring about what he has uh, promised to do. So in this world, we see strife that's in this world around us. But when we fix our thoughts, or we arm our mind with the mind of Christ, we can know a complete peace even when there is turmoil and confusion abounding around about us. Amen. We can walk through the storm. Yea, though I walk. Yeah, amen. I walk through the valley of shadow of death. Amen. Who as I heard one time say, 
Who ever heard of a shadow hurting you? Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Yeah, there's death all around us out here. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, what? I will fear no evil. Folks, it's got to be more than just you coming to church. Amen. Because you're hearing many more hours of something than you're hearing just in the few hours that we come to church. So we, we have God helping us to stay in a complete peace when our mind is fixed. It stayed on him. Amen. So the battlefield of our faith life and its successes in every test and trial that challenges us is dependent upon how our mind is armed. Let me say that for you again. Every, the battlefield of our faith life, we, we walk by faith and not by, faith, not by sight. We are, we are to use our faith every day. The battlefield of our faith life and its successes in every test and trial that challenges us is dependent upon how our mind is armed. Amen. It's not God. Of course, we all know this now after many years, but it's not God sending the test and the trial. Obviously, it's Satan bringing the test and the trial so he can get in my mind. He can get in my mind. Amen. Amen. God wants all of us all of his work, he wants it to be successful. He doesn't want there to be failure in my life. I, he doesn't want me to fail. Doesn't mean if I do that he doesn't love me, but he's, he has no pleasure in failure. God's, you know, he's not happy or he's not pleasured by failure in any, any of his children's lives, but he still loves us, amen. But just because he loves us, doesn't mean that everything is going to just be hunky-dory in my life. No, he's, he has given me responsibility to, to, uh, to adjust my thinking and to, uh, to bring my thinking to the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. We're not looking for it. We're not praying that God will send it. We're not praying that God will give it it's laying right there in your lap, perhaps, or you're on your coffee table somewhere at your, at your house. You have a Bible. You know, a lot of people have more than one Bible. And a lot of people have more than one translation of the Bible, you know. And I've talked to some people who was real proud because they had seven, eight translations, you know. Well, it's not how many translations you, say, you have or that I have. It's what am I doing with the translation that I got? What am I doing with the revelation that I've got, have through all of the reading of whatever translation you're reading from and putting, the, putting uh, God's thoughts into my mind, putting God thoughts into my mind. You remember what he says, Paul wrote, he said, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, are in, are, they're not physical, natural weapons. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But what does he say, people? He said, but they are what? Mighty. The weapons of our warfare are mighty. That means, uh, that means it's mighty meaning in that word. It's stronger than any weapon that the adversary has. He says the weapons that I have are mighty, which simply means that Satan's weapons is no match for my weapons. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought. Man, that's, that's something. That, well, I just can't do that. That's just too hard. Man, I don't know what God was thinking when he said that. No, he said, and bring into captivity every thought. What, what's he saying? Be aware of what you're saying because what you're saying is coming from how you think. It's coming from the thoughts of your mind, your mouth, it just, so get the right thought in there. Get the right mind in there so that when you speak, you are speaking words of deliverance, power, mighty, 
You're speaking deliverance. You're speaking safety. You're speaking soundness. You're speaking wellness. You're speaking whole, whole, W-H-O-L-E. You're speak, speaking wholeness. You're speaking things that God has already done for us and put it in motion through Jesus when he went to the cross and was raised up from the dead. Hallelujah. Amen. And so let's look at Philippians just for a moment or two here tonight. Philippians chapter three. So while, while you're looking on the screen or wherever that's at, remember that the battlefield of our faith life and its successes in every test and trial that challenges us is dependent upon how our mind is armed. Philippians chapter three, verses uh, 15 and 16. Paul says it, wrote it. Let us therefore as many as be perfect. So we know he's not talking perfection in the way that we know it. He's talking complete. When he uses this word perfect, that is complete, a complete piece. What is it to be complete is to lack nothing. Complete. So he says the, the, the same mind. Now let me get it right. Let us therefore as many as be perfect or be complete, be thus minded. And if anything you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, where, where, where to we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule and let us mind the same thing. What's he saying? Don't forget what you've learned. Don't forget what you've learned. Don't think you've gone to another high level and what you've learned, you don't need. You'll need it, amen. The longest day you live on this earth, you'll need everything that God has said to us, amen, amen. Now, you know, I was thinking while I was going through all of that uh, uh, about uh, today, you know, of uh, just in the, in the natural, you know, they're trying to, the reason I'm thinking about this is because Dylan come home with it and, and me and Sue couldn't do nothing with it. We already had learned that one plus one was two. Anybody in here had a trouble, have any trouble with that? We've already learned that two plus two is four. We all learned that four plus four is eight. eight. We've all learned that eight plus eight is 16. We've all learned that 16 plus 16 is 13. I'm gonna quit at what I know here. <laughs> we, we, know, we, we know that. We already, we already know that, but you're never going to get away from needing it. The new math, I'm telling you the truth. Amen. Ain't no telling what, I don't know what Sue came up with when she was trying to help Dylan. I excused myself from it. Because <laughs> uh, I didn't know how to do the new math. But just, just this good old arithmetic has really been, when I go to my checkbook, I don't use new math. I use the math that's right there in front, front of me. You know what I'm saying? I do. I can still count two plus two, two plus four plus four. And so I, I multiply, multiplication, and so forth. And I still use that. You still use that in your life. You still use that in your business. Now, I don't know if, the, if, if new math is, is, has an advantage over old math, but look what Paul is saying to us as we get, as we get over into the spiritual part of, of our life. Look what he said. Let us therefore, as many as be complete, perfect, complete, be thus minded. Have this kind of thinking mind. And if, and if in, let me get right. And if in anything you be otherwise minded, God will reveal this to you. Well, you can't get before God. That, you know, sometimes he'll yank your cord. He'll do it very lovingly. But have you ever had God to do that? Well, that was weak, but anyway, you know, you get in prayer. Sometimes God will, God, will, God will kind of pull the cord on you a little bit, you know, because you, you might be, I might be, you know, somewhere something might not be just right. God will show it to you. That's exactly what Paul's telling us right here. Listen to what he said. He said, uh, let us therefore, as many as be complete, be thus minded, be this kind of mind, be thus minded, and if anything, you be otherwise minded. 
in any other way you be otherwise minded, God will reveal that to you. He'll show it to you. Nevertheless, where to we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule and let us mind the same thing. You know what that's called? It's called God guiding me. He's guiding me. So what, did, what do we do, people? We got, we, got a, we got a big job where our mind is concerned. And I'll tell you another great, well, I say great, I don't want to use the word great, uh, a very, uh, what? A weapon that Satan uses many times to his advantage is if he can cause me to be prideful in my mind. I am what I am by the grace of God. I can do what God says I can do in his word. I don't want to be thus other minded. That's the kind of mind that I want to have. A amen. And so I, I have a new mind. I have a spiritual mind when it, when it is garrisoned round about with the word of God and every test, every challenge and every thing that the adversary throws against me, my mind is so armed, it is ever ready to, to confront it and conflict with it and cast it down. Casting down high thing, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You know, another one of those things too is if, if you ever get in a situation, have ever gotten in a situation with, uh, with other people and things have happened and you have a little difference of opinion, you have to really, really, really watch yourself that the wrong thoughts don't take a hold in your mind where forgiveness is concerned. You got to be careful why, because forgiveness, uh, unforgiveness is one of the major weapons that Satan uses against the child of God. So we want to have this mind of Christ. We want to put on the mind of Christ. We want to walk in the things that we have learned, realizing that God is so vast, there's so much more to learn about what we've already learned. God is so vast. I'll tell you, he knows it all. Anybody that knows it all from the beginning has got to be pretty sharp. Got to be pretty smart. He knew the end from the beginning. He knew you from the beginning. He knew what your name was going to be from the beginning. He knew if you were going to be male or female from the beginning. Isn't that right? God knew it. A amen. They don't make no difference what they're telling us out here. God knew what you were going to be. He knew how many hair you're going to have on your head before you ever showed up. Uh, he knew everything about you before you was ever a thought in the natural world. God knew you from the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. And still knows you today, knows us, us today. He knows where we're at spiritually. He knows where we're not at spiritually. Amen. But what does he want? He wants us to come on up in our mind. And put on the mind of Christ, amen, and let the power of God, let the Holy Ghost, let the name of Jesus work in our lives to combat the evil adversaries that are out there. And the Bible says, when I do that, I'm going to win. We're going to win, people. If we'll just do that, we're going to win, amen. Hallelujah. It may be looking bad out there. I don't know how, but I just know darkness is darkness is darkness is darkness. And darkness, you know, sometimes it's hard to see anything when you're walking in the darkness. But we are the children of the light. We're not children of the darkness. We're children of the light. We don't walk in the darkness. We walk in the light and the light is greater than the darkness. And the darkness cannot comprehend nor can it put out the light for the light shines in the darkness and the darkness comprehends it not. It does the darkness can do nothing with it. Amen. But here's one thing about it and I'm going to close. Here's one thing about it in this building, in your home, that if you turn out the lights in your house, darkness is going to take over. You turn out your spiritual light, darkness is going, going to take over. Amen. So let's keep our minds in line with the mind of Christ. Let's think like the Bible teaches us to think. 
and let us rejoice in it every day. Every day, no matter what's happening around us, no matter what it looks like, God is the master of turning things around. Hallelujah. He's the God of great turnaround. Hallelujah. You may be fighting a severe challenge tonight, but I'm telling you, if you'll just keep shining the light, God's going to turn that thing around and he's going to bring it to you, to your advantage and to your blessing. Just keep on shining the light. Hallelujah. We're talking about arming our mind with the weapons of warfare. We thank you for viewing our program with us today on this subject matter. And we trust that you received a blessing from it. But you know, the Bible tells us that the weapons of our warfare, our warfare, the Christian's warfare, the body of Christ, the, our warfare is a spiritual warfare against an outlaw named or called Satan. He came to disturb, he came to uh, uh, fight against, come against everything that God stands for. And the way he tries to get back at God is to get back through the body of Christ. So arming ourselves, the, the weapons that God has given us, we are to arm ourselves, we are to have our mind renewed to it, and then just walk in those principles of these weapons that God has given to us. I hope you enjoyed today's message. If you like a copy of it on a CD, DVD, we'll get it out to you. The information and how to do it is there on your screen. We'll be glad to send it to you. Postage paid, no cost to you. But before I go today, let me pray with you, Father. I pray for the people. I pray, Lord, uh, for those that are floundering, and for those that are going through difficult situations and circumstances, uh, that someone will cross their path with the light of God and they will then have that freedom and have that victory that God has provided for them. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Thanks again for viewing the program with us. We'll be back with you next time right here from Faith is the Victory Church, Nashville, Tennessee. We'll look forward to seeing you then. You've been watching Victorious Living with Pastor Charles Cowan. It's our hope that today's message has ministered to the need you have in your life. If you would like to receive today's message in its entirety, please call 1-800-842-7896. Or if you're in the Nashville area, call 615-226-2145 and ask for the product number on the screen. Visit us online at victoriousliving.org. If you're ever in the Nashville area, come and worship with us. Sundays at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. From Pastor Cowan and the Congregation of Faith is the Victory Church, we'll be looking for you next time right here on Victorious Living.